We all need to escape reality sometimes. That is why RPGs or role-playing games are my favorite gaming genre there is, and always has been. Hi, I'm Ruger, and here's my top 10 most epic RPGs of all time so far. This list only includes games I've played and loved over the years. If there's something I didn't include, I either didn't play it or I thought it was garbage. <coughs> Starfield. But by all means, if I missed something that you feel should be on the list, leave a comment and let me know. Hit like and subscribe while you're at it. Starting off with number 10 on the list, Pillars of Eternity. Released on March 26th, 2015, and inspired by classic RPGs like Baldur's Gate, Pillars of Eternity will throw you into the fantasy world of Eora, mainly inside the nation of Deerwood. So what the story is about is all the newborns in this Deerwood area are plagued by a recent phenomenon in which they become hollowborn upon birth, meaning they're born without souls. You, the protagonist, experience an awakening of power of some sort. You're something called a Watcher someone who can see past lives and interact with soul. It's a great little game, really caught me by surprise, so if you like stuff like Baldur's Gate, definitely give it a try. 9. Gothic 2 Released on March 15, 2001, this action RPG is set in a medieval fantasy world where you control a nameless prisoner who escapes from a mining colony and uncovers an ancient evil. I remember first getting this game and until this day I've never played anything similar. Of course there's a new gothic remake on the way which I'm looking forward to, I just really hope they don't mess it up. But yeah, the gothic series is definitely worth a playthrough, especially the second installment. Number 8. Mass Effect 2. Released on January 26, 2010, this RPG has a strange playstyle and lets you assume the role of Commander Shepard. You must assemble a team from across the universe to stop what is called the Collectors from abducting human colonies. You did get some really interesting characters that can join you on your missions. And of course, there is romance. And I have to say, one of the romanceable NPCs, Miranda Lawson, actually does a really good job of you know, making the, the player actually feel something for her. Something not very many games can do. I'm sure the same goes for some of the other <laughs> romanceable NPCs. I just have a taste, I guess. The Mass Effect gameplay is strange. You have all these biotic combos or skills, if you will, which you can use an upgrade on certain characters. You, you get your different classes, which determines which powers you can use. Great, fun, long game, but if you're into space RPGs, can't go wrong with Mass Effect. Again, I prefer the second Mass Effect in the series. The first one's also good. Third one, uh, it's the only one I haven't finished, so we're not going to talk about that one. Moving on, Cyberpunk 2077. Released on December 10th, 2020, this open world action RPG is set in a dystopian city called, wait for it, Night City. You control V, a mercenary entangled in a conspiracy involving a powerful AI. The world is awesome, the characters are great, graphics look amazing, and even though it did have one of the rockiest launches to date, I really love Cyberpunk, the characters, the world, and just how the music hits when you get into a battle is absolutely fantastic. Of course, this is a game with Johnny Silverhand played by famous Hollywood actor Keanu Reeves. A rebellious, charismatic AI that lives in your head looking to destroy the system. Whether you help him or not, it's all up to you. This game throws a lot of choices at you, which affects the world and your relationships. There are quite a few adult themes in this one, but it is a great game. How the game starts is absolutely awesome. Your character V has a best friend called Jackie Wells, a loyal and dependable biker, a former gang member. Just how much they get you to care about these characters is great. Yeah, if you haven't played it, Cyberpunk 2077 has finally got rid of most of the annoying bugs that plagued it for release. So check it out if you haven't. The Elder Scrolls Skyrim. This one I struggle to pick between Skyrim and Oblivion, but yeah, released on November 11th, 2011. This open world RPG is set 200 years after Oblivion. So if you haven't played Oblivion, definitely check that out as well. If you have an older computer, that's a great game. 
In Skyrim though, you are the dragonborn. You get to explore a very lush and detailed province and face the ancient dragon Alduin. You can choose your own path and explore at your own pace. There's a reason Skyrim is so extremely popular to this very day. And even though there are much better games out there at the moment, if you don't have a very powerful PC, Skyrim might just be one of the best RPGs you can play on an older system. Characters like Ulfric Stormcloak and General Talias, Cicero and Aiella the Huntress, you're gonna be spending hundreds of hours in this world if you haven't played Skyrim already. Number five, Kingdom Come Deliverance. Released on February 13th, 2018, Kingdom Come Deliverance is an open world role-playing game developed by Warhorse Studios and is set in a medieval Bohemia during the Holy Roman Empire in the 15th century. You control Henry, which is the son of a blacksmith who witnesses the destruction of his village and family. Afterwards, you embark on a quest for revenge and justice. The cool thing about this game is it's actually based on real landscapes. So the castles and ruins you see in the game are based on actual castles in real life. This game has been criticized for being too difficult and I agree to a point because even though it is very tough, it's very satisfying to master once you get the hang of it. And as the game starts, you're just a useless blacksmith working your way up until you become this badass soldier. And the NPCs aren't as interesting and I don't think the voiceovers are great, but just how beautiful this game is and the amount of detail they've put into the world and the buildings make this one stand out. And I'm really looking forward to Kingdom Come 2, which will hopefully release in 2025. But I'm definitely putting my money down for that. If you haven't played Deliverance, you're missing out. Try it. Number four, Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Released on September 2nd, 2021, and based on the Pathfinder tabletop RPG, you lead the crusade against a demonic invasion of the World Wound. Now, my first introduction into the Pathfinder series was actually getting the uh, Kingmaker, which was the first Pathfinder game for free on Epic Games a couple of years ago. So I, I played 10 or 15 hours of that and decided I like it enough that I want Wrath of the Righteous and I purchased it. And man, I've got to tell you, this was one of the RPGs that have absolutely blown my mind. Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous is one of the best RPGs they are. They're still releasing DLCs for Wrath of the Righteous, so they are actively developing and improving the game, which is awesome. Definitely worth a buy if you don't know the Pathfinder games and you like stuff like Baldur's Gate or, you know, the Divinity games. Definitely check out this one. It's good. Number three, Dragon Age Origins. Released on November 3rd, 2009, Dragon Age Origins is set in the world of Thedas, where you are a Grey Warden who fights against what is called the Darkspawn, these evil creatures who come from underneath the ground. This game has some of the best and most memorable NPCs there are. Dragon Age Origins is a great game with a lot of branching paths, choices, romanceable characters, male and female, and a super interesting story. The ending that I got anyway absolutely blew my mind and I think about it to this day. I won't spoil it for you, but I will say that my character played Doctor with Morrigan one too many times and she took a child through a portal and uh, that's all I'm gonna say about that, but nobody really knows what that ever happened. Do you? Let me know in the comments. I mean, they did kind of attempt to tell you what happened in the Dragon Age Inquisition game released years later, but yeah, it just didn't satisfy me. So Dragon Age Origins is by far the best in the series. Number two and um, Inquisition, just even though the graphics are way better, it doesn't come close to how cool Dragon Age Origins was in 2009. Baldur's Gate 2 Shadows of Arm, released September 24th, 1998. This was my favorite game for years. 
I know there's a Baldur's Gate 3, uh, and quite honestly, uh, even though I love Baldur's Gate 3, man, Baldur's Gate 2 was just... I wanted every RPG to be like at the time. Baldur's Gate 2, obviously a continuation of the first Baldur's Gate game. Of course, you can create your character, different classes. You're on a quest to discover your heritage and battle this evil mage called Irenicus. The story is really great. It starts off a bit slow, but once you get out of the starting area, the whole world opens up. Characters like Vaconia, this mysterious vampire. I don't know, that, that kind of does it for me. You also get awesome characters, like my one of my favorites was Edwin Odessera, a powerful and very arrogant mage. Very smart, but yes, yeah, not, not too loyal, but I, I really like to find it really interesting. Of course, you get Minsk, the, the chaotic good ranger with a giant space hamster named Boo. I also get some kind of annoying characters like Airy, a little fairy cleric thing. But hey, you, you can get a castle from her somewhere throughout the game. So that's cool. I know all the hypes about Baldur's Gate 3, but you haven't played the second one. Man, just do it and get the Throne of Ball expansion while you're at it. The Witcher 3, The Wild Hunt. I'm sure this isn't a big surprise to anyone. The Witcher 3 is set in a vast fantasy world where you control Geralt of Rivia, a witcher on the quest to find his adopted daughter Ciri, who by the way has this insane power, making her the target for this evil horde called the Wild Hunt. I first saw The Witcher 3 on a review on an or very on a very old Angry Joe review and, and even though I didn't think it looked too great I've never been a fan of like console type games so it didn't look too great but everyone carried on about how awesome The Witcher 3 was so eventually I buy a bit the bullet paid full price and spent hundreds upon hundreds of hours playing in that world and I drove my wife absolutely crazy talking about it. It's all I could speak about for like, I don't know, what was it, half a year? <laughs> all the DLCs I paid for as they released, full price, and that is something I never do with other games. Well, very rarely. But The Witcher 3 is an absolute masterpiece. It's not overhyped, it's great. Because The Witcher does have a lot of romanceful options in the game, but mainly you're gonna be struggling to choose between Triss and Yennefer. Or you can just end up like me and 90% of the male population and choose both and get a very special cutscene. Sure, most of you know what I'm talking about. Not only are the stories and characters really great, but just how everything ties together. Like this one guy, Ronto Odim, which is this mysterious guy you met right at the start of the game in a tavern, but you, you don't realize it. You, you speak to this guy, go through the game, at some point you see him again making some idle talk, but you don't know who this guy is until you do a second playthrough. Now who this guy actually is, is one of the very big bad guys in one of the DLCs. I won't spoil it, but man, there are just so many OMG moments, if you will. Definitely worth your time and money. That's it, what did you think of my first top 10 RPG list? Did I miss anything? Is there something you want to add about the games I've spoken about? Do you agree, disagree? Let me know in the comments, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care and have a great one.